Hi, I'm James, and this is Buzzard. A space dogfighting game published to the Google Play Store and itch.io. Players accumulate points by shooting down at enemy ships. Points that can then be used to purchase upgrades for their ship. Players are able to customise their ship's engine, armour, energy system and heavy and light weapons, resulting in over 4.5 trillion unique configurations for your ship. Maybe one of these configurations will be good enough to beat the extra tough enemy frigate on round 5. So let's talk about what mobile features Buzzard takes advantage of. First of all, the gyroscope. By default, gyroscope is used to control the pitch and roll of the ship. This leaves your fingers free to use the boost, heavy weapon shoot and self-destruct buttons. In the settings menu, the user is able to choose not to use the gyro and instead use an on-screen virtual joystick. The game uses the microphone to immerse the player into the world of Buzzard. When the game first starts, an interactive cutscene is played. The player must respond correctly to advance. The voice to text recognition is done using the Hugging Face API for Unity. When the player dies, they'll see this cutscene. If the user navigates to the audio menu, they're able to replace the sound played with their own custom sound instead. Look, I've died. Oh, what am I gonna do? I guess I'm gonna say a bad word on YouTube. Here we go. <gasps> Finally, vibration is used to give feedback both when navigating the UI of the game, but also to immerse the player in the gameplay. Light vibration is played when UI elements are selected, and when playing, vibration is played when an enemy ship is destroyed. The strength of this vibration is linked to the distance from the enemy ship. Far away ships will cause the phone to emit a light vibration, medium ships a medium vibration, and close range ships a heavy vibration. This is done by having a haptic feedback object class which inherits from scriptable objects. It has three public methods, light, medium, and heavy vibration, which are all wrapper methods around the light, medium, and heavy feedback methods provided by the Candy Coded library. We can add the create asset menu attribute to the class and can now create a haptic feedback object in our project in Unity. Now, whenever a button is clicked, for example, we can drag and drop our haptic feedback object into the Unity event and select the appropriate feedback method. Alternatively, we can hold a reference to this object and call its method through code like what is done with the haptic feedback on enemy kill. As well as leveraging unique mobile features, the game also takes advantage of various frameworks, those being the Google Play Games services, Cinemachine and Unity Cloud. Google Play Games services are able to allow the user to authenticate themselves using their Google Play account. Save game allows the following data to be saved between play sessions, and as the data is saved to the cloud, it also allows the player's data to persist if they were to uninstall then reinstall the game. Additionally, the Google Play Games framework is used to reward the player with achievements at various points throughout the game. Awarding achievements is made easy for Unity's social API, which provides a common point of interaction for multiple different social platforms. The social.reportprogress function is how you can award an achievement. You pass in an ID which matches the ID of one of the achievements set up in the Play Games console, the progress of the achievement, and a callback for when the process is completed. Authentication is done through the Sign In Manager class. On Awake, the Play Games platform is activated, and then on Start, we can attempt zero click authentication. If the sign in is successful, then we can invoke Unity events to let other objects know that the sign in was successful, and if it was not successful, then we can prompt the user to sign in manually. The next system uses the float value reference class I talked about in this video and allows for a value of type color, float, int, or ball to be stored in the assets of the project. This allows any game object to reference the same value and is very useful for configurable settings, for example. The system is designed to be easily expandable and you can add new types, for example, a vector value reference. As for the save game, there are a few classes responsible for saving the game both locally and to the cloud. The brains of the operation is the Buzzard Game Data class, which is responsible for loading and saving all persistent data. It does this by reading and writing to save files. These are files storing the current configuration of each part of the ship, a file storing a dictionary which tracks the quantity of each item not equipped on the ship, and finally a save file which is a conglomeration of all the different save files previously mentioned, additionally containing player data such as the player's money, games played and number of kills, and also containing data configured in the settings menu. 
Finally, the file stores the custom user sound to be played when the player dies. On start, the Buzzard Game Data Instance sets up its dependencies. This means loading all of the relevant save files and also loading all of the value references that are used to store values that any object in the game can access. Next, if there is a save game file, its contents are passed to the onSaveGameRead function. This function is used to both handle reading the local save file and reading the cloud save file retrieved from the save game interactor. If the data is empty, then an initial save file is created by collapsing the current config files and data to a string and saving this string to the cloud via the save game interactor. Then finally, recalling the method, but with actual data this time. If the data isn't empty, by first passing it to a save game data object and then passing it to the save config files local method, which saves all of the composite save files and updates the different value references. It also saves the user sound if one exists and finally, the save game file is written. Each time the scene changes, all of the save game files are saved using their current state and the game is saved to the cloud. The cloud save data is initially read once the main menu manager is notified that the user is authenticated. The buzzard game data then asks the save game interactor to load and read the save game. To demonstrate the save game data working, I can go into the save game file and change some accessibility settings manually. Now when I load up the game, you can see that the menu has reacted to what was in the save file. If we change the settings in the menu and change scene, then you can see that the save file is updated. When we load up the audio scene, we can record some custom audio. In our explorer, you'll see our web file. Also, in the save file, you can see our web file's contents. If we delete the web file from our explorer and start the game, the file is retrieved from the save file and resaved to the explorer. Cinemachine is used instead of standard Unity cameras in the main menu, upgrade scene and main game scene. It's used to add camera shake to the main game when boosting, as well as increasing FOV when boosting. Additionally, it's used to provide a third person mode to the main game. In the upgrade scene, Cinemachine is used to dynamically animate the camera when selecting part of the ship to upgrade. The camera zooms into the focused area of the ship when selected. Finally, Unity Cloud services are used for cloud content delivery as well as Unity advertisements. Banner ads are displayed when the loading screen is active and inside of the audio customization scene. Additionally, rewarded advertisements are used to give the user a choice to earn some additional credits that they can use for upgrading their ship. When building the game, I noticed that the application's file size is quite large. According to the following Google published report, there seems to be a negative correlation between app APK size and install conversion rate for apps with sizes below 100 megabytes. The research also finds that a significant decline in conversion rate is due to the install not completing. This is for a variety of reasons, but an app with a size of 10 megabytes has a download completion rate of about 30% higher than an APK of 100. This could be from people having to pay for the data that they use to download. Cancelling the download due to long download times or internet connectivity issues. Over 50% of Indian and Indonesian Android smartphone users do not have access to Wi-Fi and so likely have to pay for any data they do use, causing games with a large file size to be less popular. And with Android holding a 93% market share of the Indonesian and 95% market share of the Indian operating system market, reducing the download size of the game is very important. Therefore, Unity Addressables and the Unity Cloud CDN is used to reduce the initial download size of the game. Additional content can be downloaded after the app has been installed from the Play Store. This reduces the size of the initial install, something previously identified as important, but also means that certain elements of the game, for example the player, enemies and scene, can be changed without the user needing to update their game from the Google Play Store. Instead, the new content is uploaded to a bucket in the Unity Cloud and is then downloaded when it's needed on the user's device. This gives flexibility to me, the developer, and could facilitate seasonal changes to the game's cosmetics for Christmas or Halloween, for example. GitHub was used to version control the project. A Kanban GitHub project board in conjunction with GitHub issues was used to organize the tasks to be completed on the project. And GitHub is also used to store the documentation for the game in the repository's readme. As for planning of the game, I used Illustration to plan the flow of the game alongside reviewing other games to inform its design. Design mockups were also illustrated for the UI for the game. And to design the UI, I also took inspiration from other games. The game takes accessibility into account. These settings are accessible from the accessibility settings menu. The player can customize if the gyro is enabled, if the pitch input of the controls is inverted, the outline color and thickness of enemies, and finally the color scheme of the UI. 
Changing these colours can lead to some pretty cool new looking UIs. I'd just like to take this moment to thank all the testers who have tested out my game. Thank you so much everyone, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you for watching, and here is some gameplay of Buzzard. Striker class, vessel, detective, pin launch bay, pilot, identify yourself. Blizzard. Blizzard. Blizzard, stand by and await instruction. Strike deployment authorized at Astra Pilot. Ad Astra House Condor. Ad Astra House Condor. Thank you. 